face that reality. I don't know any reporters that have been doing this for a long time that disagree with that statement. All of the reporters in Yemen, we, you know, when I go there, I, we, we sit and we talk about how insane the U.S. policy is. We have no actual intelligence gathering happening in Yemen. We don't know who we're killing. And we're enraging people that probably would be on our side if we didn't bomb their village. In Afghanistan, I don't know how many times I heard stories of people who said, I used to love the Americans, but after you did this night raid and killed members of my family, I want to put on a suicide vest and blow myself up among Americans. I heard it time and time again in different parts of Afghanistan, including in non-Pashtun areas, the dominant ethnic group of the Taliban. I heard it from people who were terrorized by the Taliban for much of their lives, supported the United States going into Afghanistan, worked with them in some cases as military translators, or actually became police commanders on the US-backed Afghan National Police Force. And when their family members are killed, they say, well, we're, we're turning against you. It's not that they want to join the Taliban. It's that they want to join the fight against the people that killed their loved ones. The enemy of my enemy of my friend, as my friend, is a very powerful sentiment in these countries right now. We're driving people into the fold, not necessarily of Al-Qaeda, but, but, but into the broader fold of people that want to do harm to Americans. And the, the most horrifying part of it is that it's not that they, they don't hate us for our McDonald's or our freedoms. They have a legitimate score to settle. We killed members of their family. You don't think that, if, that, that, that we as a society would react that way if someone burst on our door in the middle of the night, killed two pregnant women, as happened in one of the raids that we investigated, then dug the bullets out of their bodies, tied them up, and blamed it on their family members later, and said it was an honor killing? You don't think that, 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 that we would be wanting justice for the people that had done this? But all we do in Afghanistan, or Pakistan, or Yemen, if we do anything, is write, write a little check to them. Give them a, a few hundred or a few thousand dollars, depending on how important the person was. And then we move along to the next night raid. That, that's, that's what the war in Afghanistan has become at this point. It's a, it's a war of attrition, trying to kill our way to victory. And vi no one can even define what victory is. So I would say this is such a grim reality right now. We've got warlords on the CIA payroll in Somalia. We're paying Somalis $200 a, a month to go and hunt people that are on our kill list. And we don't even know who they're killing. We just want, we just want to, to show some results. I don't think that Congress isn't involved with this. They're a huge part of the problem. When military commanders go there, Congress says, you know, how, how are we defining progress in Afghanistan? Or how are we defining progress in Yemen or Pakistan? They want body counts. They want to know the names of the people that have been killed. They want to know that you took out a terror cell somewhere. It's all, what, what an Air, Air Force a friend of mine said, it's like a self-licking ice cream cone. I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what the whole operation has become. And I'm going to wrap up so that we can have time to, to, to have some discussion. But the last thing I'll say is that you know, I, I, when, when I watched the aftermath of the, of the Boston Marathon bombing and, and, and saw the, the, the media coverage, you know, where they stuck this, uh, this track star's face and Rupert Murdoch put his, his picture on the New York Post and said bagmen, said these are the people that these are the guys that the feds are looking for in connection with the marathon bombing. You know, the sort of racist rush to believe that it's got to be somebody with brown skin who's a Muslim and they put this kid's picture on the paper and they, they, tried, they ruined and they tarred him. And, and it turns out he's just a, he was just a local track runner who had been at the marathon for, I mean, it's incredible, but he was at the marathon to watch the marathon um, as, a, as a track runner. Um, so, so the New York Post does that. Then there's all this hysteria, uh, and, and of course, you, you know, there was so much bigotry and bad reporting and racism in the media coverage. Um, but then I, I, you know, I watched as the stories were done about Carlos Arredondo, whose, whose son had had died in Iraq and, and is this amazing activist. And Carlos Arredondo, if you don't know his name, I bet you, you you remember this image. He was the guy in the cowboy hat who was carrying the double amputee in the wheelchair away from the, the blast scene. When the blast went off, he ran toward the blast, not away from it. And he helped save that man's life. And that man lost both of his legs, but he's 